This is a Course in Miracles. It is a required course. Only the time you take it is voluntary. Free will does not mean that you can establish the curriculum. It means only that you can elect what you want to take at a given time. The course does not aim at teaching the meaning of love, for that is beyond what can be taught. It does aim, however, at removing the blocks to the awareness of love's presence, which is your natural inheritance. The opposite of love is fear, but what is all-encompassing can have no opposite. This course can therefore be summed up very simply in this way. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. Today we are reading from chapter 14, Teaching for Truth. This section is section four, Your Function in Atonement. Paragraph one, when you accept a brother's guiltlessness, you will see the atonement in him. For by proclaiming it in him, you make it yours, and you will see what you sought. You will not see the symbol of your brother's guiltlessness shining within him while you still believe it is not there. His guiltlessness is your atonement. Grant it to him, and you will see the truth of what you have acknowledged. Yet, truth is offered first to be received, even as God gave it first to his Son. The first in time means nothing. But the first in eternity is God the Father, who is both first and one. Beyond the first, there is no other, for there is no order, no second. (laughs) For there is no order, no second, or third, and nothing but the first. Um, Do you understand that this is like a metaphysical um, statement? Of reality, I mean, what are you what are you hearing? That's well, saying? what I what I'm hearing is that uh, first that I must see my brother's guiltlessness. I must at least attempt to say or believe. It says believe, believe that my brother is not guilty, not guilty. And why? Because if I cannot see his guiltlessness, I will never recognize it in myself, and then the communication. Is cut off from God. I, I, it's actually necessary. For if me. I don't see my brother's guiltlessness, I, I'm not seeing anything. Right. Well, that's true. I'm, I'm looking We're in at the a, nothingness again. Uh, right. I'm in a hallucination of <laughs> yeah. some sort. Yeah. So that's why it's important to yeah. make direct contact mm-hmm. with the brother. Yeah. Is to make direct contact with me. Yes, it is. So, to so make what, direct contact, to make, to make recognition that my brother is not guilty, is to, to claim my own guiltlessness, and that restores the communication, and in fact, it restores the kingdom of heaven. But the sequence is that um, I'm a lunatic, I'm lost on a strange planet of illusions, mm-hmm. and I'm supposed to, uh, everything I see is wrong. You know, because of the perceptual mechanism, yes. mm-hmm. I'm 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 lost in time. I'm mm-hmm. lost in space. I'm I'm lost in illusions. Right. And so, the only way that I can escape this conundrum, this puzzle, mm-hmm. is to recognize that my there's nothing wrong whatsoever with my brother, even to the extent that he is my own self. The first step I have to make isn't even within myself. It's the decision, as you've said so many times, it's the decision to ask the way out of this conundrum. But the first thing, you know, I have to do is look at that brother over there and let him go. Let him go. Let him not be what I think he is. Let him not. Yeah. Don't. It's, It's a real training of self to decide not to label what's in front of me and perceive that I think that I know what I am seeing. I think I know what I'm hearing because hidden behind all forms is the light of Christ. 
And so if I want to see it, I have to know that the light of Christ is not guilty. And um, I will never see it, and I won't recognize it in myself either if I'm going to judge my brothers and find them guilty. Well, and the other thing that I just wanted to point out, it, it struck out to me, is uh, the first in time means nothing. Right. Okay, that means God as a, cr a creator God, mm -hmm. you know, in our terms, mm -hmm. day one, two, three, four, however you want to look at right. it, God as creator God is meaningless because God is God and that's all he ever was and all he ever will be. And it's, the, in other words, existence is, you know, reality is real and there isn't anything else. Truth is true, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the idea that some things happened, I apologize for being so redundant and um, just repeating what this has said so many different times. But the idea that anything happened um, somehow stalls us out sometimes into thinking that uh, we need to unravel the stuff that happened. It's, you know, it's like we're crawling a yeah. rope, like, like we're stuck on this planet that we can't get out of. We're, we're pulling ourselves out with this rope mm -hmm. of memory or something like that. And right. the Course is saying, there's only been one thing, mm -hmm. and that's God. And yes. God's, the nature of God is to extend love. Yes. We are that extension. Yeah, we are. We are that extension. And we're designed to extend like the Father. Right, and we were we were simultaneous with the Father. So in some ways, we're an, uh, an inherent part of the mind of God. Just there we are, yeah. and we cauterized ourselves. We sealed ourselves off by this, what he's calling a lack of forgiveness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, which is just meaning to say there's something wrong with this and I need to fix it. Right, exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I agree. Second paragraph? Yeah, sure. Let's go on. You who belong to the first cause, created by him like unto himself and part of him, are more than merely guiltless. The state of guiltlessness is only the condition in which what is not there has been removed from the disordered mind that thought it was. Yeah, like a sense of guiltiness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This state... And only this state must you attain with God beside you. For until you do, you will still think that you are separate from him. You can perhaps feel his presence next to you, but cannot know that you are one with him. This cannot be taught. Learning applies only to the condition in which it happens of itself. Let's Let's start with the end. This cannot be taught. Learning, okay, that's forgiveness stuff, right? Mm -hmm. the, 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 the taking your grievances to the Holy Spirit. Right. This is the learning process, right. learning what I am, who I am, exactly. through this forgiveness process, yes. which is uh, facilitated uh, by, through the agency of the Holy Spirit. I can't do it myself. Right. So this cannot be taught. Learning applies only to the condition condition in which it happens of itself. And it said that in the earlier message. This was blowing my mind. And I'm going, okay, how? By blessing. Yes. That's, that's, the, that's the condition mm -hmm. of learning is being able to bless. Yeah, it is to be able to bless. And to be able to bless is to have, to see the brother as offering me nothing but a blessing of the presence of God's beautiful creation. That's all I'm, that's all I'm mm -hmm. confronted with. Mm -hmm. I'm not confronted with a project that needs to be fixed. In other right. words, a grievance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, obviously in our, quote, real, real world, which is, you know, what the Course calls a delusional mind has set upon it, I will see things that I think for sure I need to fix. I will see things that I for sure feel as though I've been affronted or attacked or, and um, whenever those times happen, that's exactly when you go, I'm not seeing things correctly. Well, okay, in this planet we got delivered to, this planet this of, of illusions, the, mm -hmm. where we think we've been lowered in. We never, right, there was only one thing, God. That's all it yeah. was. Mm -hmm. And God, but his nature is to extend. Yes. And so we here said, oh, extension. We don't understand that love. This is the crazy paradox that the Course is constantly sort of saying, you can't figure it out. You yeah. know, just that we're in a process. We can't figure it out. But we went there. We're stuck down here. 
And it's almost like we've been driven mad by cauterizing mm -hmm. the connection to God. In other words, I'm an extension of God. Yeah. Because I want to have agency, I want to do that myself. I cauterize off the, the, um, the channel back to God, which is the, the sonship. I cauterize that. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. I almost look at it like, okay, let's weld off, let's block that, let's mm -hmm. mortar that in, let's brick that in. So we can't get back to God. Right. That was our decision, and we didn't do it. That's, that's what it constantly reminds us of, is that what we thought we did did not happen. It was impossible to separate ourselves from God. So we had to pretend that we did. Okay. So now we're, we're, we're lunatics. We're madmen. Mm -hmm. And we believe that we built a brick wall. We can't get back to the mothership because... We built this brick wall, and it's mm -hmm. got us sealed off. And we're down there, and, and we keep you know, signaling out to nowhere that we're in desperate straits. We hate this place, and we wish we would get out of here. And no one can help us because, because we're an illusion. We're an illusion that we have a wall. Yeah. The wall's an illusion. Right. The wall is an illusion. And, and so that you have to have somebody that can see through that, talk you through it. Right. The good, the bad, the, the good, the bad, and the ugly aren't real. I mean, all of it, everything that has categories or separations is not the real. The real has, is something that is always eternal. And so this is a reminder of the whole process here is to get a switch from my body-centric self to the thought of God that is eternal, that is in me. So therefore, I am in an eternal being and nothing can harm my eternal being. Obviously, the body can be harmed. I can, you know, if somebody th throws something at me or wants to shoot me, you know, I'm going to feel pain. But um, to remember that there is no death is, is quite the thing because once you realize that this is just a temporary thing that I'm up to, like I'm playing a game, I'm playing, you know, I think p gamers would understand where they get so immersed in the game that like when someone knocks on the door, they kind of, ah! you know, they kind of jump because. Yeah, another they, reality they, poked yeah, in. Yeah, another them. reality pokes in and they're like, oh, wow, I, you know, I was so lost in my character in there. Well, that's what we are, I think. I think we're in a character play. And I don't, I don't know how this happened. As the Course says, it didn't really happen. It's in a mindscape that is pretending to be something that it is not. Well, and we, cre we created some rules. You know, one rule is um, I can only find the truth of this hallucination by touching, feeling, smelling, and tasting this hallucination. Right. We, we rely on our senses yeah, to that's tell how us what I, it that's is. That's how I know. Yeah, that's how I know. That's how I know that this is real. That this and, is real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In other words, I create the hallucination, mm -hmm. and the hallucination has rules, which yeah. is it can only be known by tasting, touching, etc. And so, of course, I feel pain. That's one of the rules I set up. Pain establishes that this is, is what it is. Yeah, it's real to me. Yeah. Now, from the, from the side of the hallucination... I'm not here to say that pain should be ignored no, or I, suffering. No, no. You know what I mean? Yeah, and in fact, all things, all extensions are to heal the suffering of the world. All extensions of love, which is why Jesus healed physical bodies. And, and the healing is only always not to fix it, because fixing it reinforces that it was wrong in the first place. All healing is what the Course calls denial, but I will say it's a kind of a, an undoing, in it, and it calls it the undoing as well. Yes. An, an undoing of what seems wrong, undoing it, mm -hmm. undoing it, undoing it. That's the only way to get rid of an illusion, right. is to undo it. You can't fix the illusion, it mm -hmm. just makes it deeper and deeper. Right. And I mean, it would be interesting if we could ever talk to the minds of those who were healed in the biblical times by Jesus, because my sense is that when he placed his hands on them or whatever he did, told Lazarus to get up and walk, what most likely happened was that Lazarus remembered who and what he is. 
And so in that remembrance, he's, he's, his body returns to a place of perfection. I don't know if that happens in, tr- in uh, if, I re- if I remembered fully who and what I am, what, would all my ailments, these little things that go on, would they go away completely? Well, I'd say that roughly more or less, as Ramana Maharshi said, you know, the, the Indian mystic saying mm-hmm. whatever, um, you keep on feeling the pain. But yeah. the thing is, the pain is identified as an illusory distraction. That, that is true. And, and it, no, it no longer... You level up. You level up. The right. pain is still there. Uh-huh. But you level up above it and you go, oh, wow, pain. What do you know? Mm-hmm. Pretty intense, too. But mm-hmm. that's not what I'm about. That's not... You know, and so that there's a lack of investment I agree. in it. I agree with that. Yeah. So, so paragraph three. When you have let all that obscured the truth in your most holy mind be undone for you and therefore stand in grace before your father, he will give himself to you as he has always done. Giving himself is all he knows, and so it is all knowledge. For what he knows can what for what he knows not cannot be and therefore cannot be given. Ask not to be forgiven, for this has already been accomplished. Ask rather to learn how to forgive and to restore what always was your unforgiving mind. Atonement becomes real and visible to those who use it. On earth, this is your only function, and you must learn that it is all you want to learn. You will feel guilty till you learn this, for in the end, Whatever form it takes, your guilt arises from your failure to fulfill your function in God's mind with all of yours. Can you escape this guilt by failing to fulfill your function here? So again, as though for some reason in this one, I keep, you know, when we reread it in the first place, I I keep feeling like I'm in a Star Trek episode and that there are some people trapped on a planet and that they've got this illusion problem, and mm-hmm. that they're sealed off mm-hmm. from movement, and and so that they're they're having to figure out a way to communicate to them through the illusion. Yeah. That you know, the, only the illusion can talk to them. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like in the 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 book Flatland, where in Pointland, and that's us, we're stuck in Pointland. Mm-hmm. In Pointland, the, the thing only knows what's being broadcast out of its only own head. Right. And if something comes to it from the outside and in Pointland, it interprets it as something that came out of its own head. So yeah. we're, we're caught in that kind of dog yeah. chasing its tail type thing where the Holy Spirit has to, We that's why the only way we can get out of here is to offer blessings. Yeah, and forgiveness. Because then, because me, me offering a blessing, meaning um, I see that the veil has fallen on the brother. The veil has fallen spontaneously without effort a blessing comes forth out of me because a veil has fallen Mm -hmm. on the reality of that brother and i spontaneously bless that brother that strange mechanism facilitated by the holy spirit Mm -hmm. feels like i did it yeah yeah but it yeah but i didn't do it and i can't do it yeah it can never be done alone and so we're always whenever there's an extension it's because God, the Holy Spirit has worked through me. You must forgive it because it has, it has no consequences in heaven. It has nothing that you bring that seems to be, no matter how destructive, no matter the wars, no matter the hatreds, no matter the tortures, no matter the sickness and disease, all of it that makes this quite an experience in a body um, is not carried from the body world it's 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 like it was it was just dust in the wind it's nothing it's a nothingness well there's a real simple aside from the existential reality of what we're doing here as an illusion and the uselessness of it and the the dynamics with heaven and Mm -hmm. metaphysics it hurts okay it hurts yeah we're gonna die Mm mm-hmm um, and everybody lives with a kind of a, a bit of fear or, or, or anxiety yeah, about that, as they say in the Yoga Sutras. Self-preservation is very, very It's real. called abhinivesha. Abhinivesha means that built into the body is a fear of losing life. Mm-hmm. 
it's built in. Yeah. So uh, the idea that you're going to get peaceful about your last breath and coughing on your phlegm and dying, <laughs> is, it, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's going to be upsetting unless there's a preparation and there's a lack of solid clinging yeah. to all this illusory stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and the Course says that. So the, the deal is, you were saying, well, be, because this all comes to naught, that's why we need to forgive. That's why we need to go through this process. And I'm saying that, the, as the Course has mentioned in many, many other places, I've got to understand it hurts to be here. It, it hurts to it hurts to be yeah. involved in this mm -hmm. thing. It, it, nothing ever, you know, I mean, I've got to do some science. Right. Did, and did, did all your big, great works ever amount to anything? Did, what one thing did you do that you really have something to show for? Or even find me anybody that did something that really came to something. Philip Johnson, the architect, mm -hmm. he did the AT&T building. That was worth living for. Mm -hmm. What? It's just a big It's just a big building. <laughs> yeah. And he still died. Yeah, mm-hmm. No, all all things will end up back to, to dust again. So the no, temple, really, in your life, the temples life, of Solomon fell. I mean, there's this has, huge. Has <laughs> anything you've done, or, or not just you? Take some great person, and find anybody anywhere. We have to do the science. Find anybody anywhere that did something you think amounted to something that goes forward. Mother Teresa. Yeah. Saint Francis. Anybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Right. Well, I mean, the only thing that's that goes forward is the teachings of love that came out of it. That, those teachings of love will go on and on and on. What Mother Teresa gave to, to you know, gather up the, the castaways, the ones that were just lying on the streets and everything else, and um, St. Francis, I mean, that's an extension of love. Her demonstration of an extension of love is important in this world because it, it helps us to remember who we are. All demonstrations of love help us to remember who we are. So it's up to us to demonstrate it as much as possible. <laughs> I mean, once you start to get it, to demonstrate it as much as possible. What does that look like? Well, later on in this section is gonna say we don't know how to make a decision and that we really need to rely on the Holy Spirit to make decisions for us. How do we open up that line of communication? It's letting us know, little by little, let go of your grievances. Do not hold your brother in jail and make him guilty because you make yourself guilty and therefore the access to the Holy Spirit for communication isn't available for you, who would make all the great decisions for you and make life easy, but we don't want it. We want to do it ourselves. I want to do it myself. Mm -hmm. Yes, all the time. But what I was going to say about, let's say, take a St. Francis, it, it's necessary to see that in this world of this illusion, even St. Francis, I use him as an example, we got the book, mm -hmm. um, because uh, he's considered the closest human to Christ, you know, the closest yeah. thing to Jesus and all this mm -hmm. kind of thing. He himself did not die a very happy man. No. He, he was miserable no. because the great work that he started of extending the kingdom of love in, yeah. in the manner of the Christ. And this guy had the stigmata, and he started churches, yeah. and he has the Franciscan order that's named after him, mm -hmm. all this stuff. He felt like he got hijacked, co-opted, shafted, betrayed. You know what I'm like saying? That. Francis yeah, would have built an edifice to God mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus Christ. That's mm -hmm. what he was about. Right. He's, he's as bad off as Philip Johnson. Mm -hmm. He's got a Franciscan order. That order no longer practices what Francis considered the core teaching, the core essence, right. which is this poverty of some sort. Mm -hmm. And love, love, poverty, mm -hmm. detachment, whatever mm -hmm. it was. Chastity. It did not happen. So even St. Francis, with his lofty goals that are totally spiritual, mm -hmm. there wasn't a physical goal there other than the fact that he wanted the illusion to be healed through the love of Christ in this illusion. Right. He didn't really succeed. Right. My only point is whether it's uh, Napoleon, Alexander the Great, St. Francis of Assisi, Mother Teresa, you have to do a little bit of work and see that there's no way to heal the illusion in any way, mm -hmm. the, you know, I mean, other than forgiveness, 
with the Holy Spirit yeah. and this sonship thing. I mean, I don't, I don't mean to be toady about no. the Course in Miracles, but I, I don't... Right. It, it's, it, it, I know it's solipsistic. It, it collapses onto me like I'm, I'm going to save the world. Mm-hmm. But you know, there's something, it, there's a good tradition for this, which is in Buddhism, they, you know, I mean, they've, they came to that conclusion themselves. Now, I will save the world. The Buddha didn't do it. All the other bodhisattvas and the Tathagatas, mm-hmm. none of those people did it. It's up, for, up to me here mm-hmm. now. That's the intensity of the one-to-one relationship with God that eventually is, I am God, and I've, yes. I've been getting a role. You know, yes. I mean, you no. know, we hate to say that. No, it's, it's true because if if God is all, and I'm an extension of God, I contain all of His attributes. This is to help awaken me. This whole process is to help me awaken to those attributes that are mine that are the same. God as wants to God. get back to Himself, and it, and and the only thing I can do is. Uh, undo the cauterization right. in this crazy illusion planet I've got. And it says that, you know, we're we're incomplete without him, and he's incomplete without us. The reason why it's incomplete is because so long as we cut off that communication, which allows for that love to flow back and forth, there, um, God senses a void. There's, a, there's something missing. It's the mystery and the sensing of the void that God senses. Where is it? It's not out there in heaven. No. It's me. Yeah, I'm it. I'm My it. sense of things missing is God's sense of something being amiss. Mm-hmm. And when I don't have that sense of things being amiss, right. suddenly God's happy. I mean, yeah, I know. We're all happy. <laughs> everybody. <laughs> Everybody's happy. Paragraph four. Okay. You need not understand creation to do what must be done before that knowledge would be meaningful to you. God breaks no barriers, neither did he make them. When you release them... I did it. I created the barrier. (laughs) When you release them, they are gone. God will not fail, nor ever has in anything. Decide that God is right and you are wrong about yourself. He created you out of himself, but still within him. He knows what you are. Remember that there is no second to him. There cannot therefore be anyone without his holiness, nor anyone unworthy of his perfect love. Fail not in your function of loving in a loveless place made out of darkness and deceit, for thus are darkness and deceit undone. Fail not yourself, but instead offer to God and you his blameless Son. For this small gift of appreciation for his love God will himself exchange your gift for his. Before I forget it, I've got to say that I, I see shadows of animal sacrifice, of human sacrifice here. In, in, in the illusion, we have done certain, I'm not going to judge them, things mm-hmm. of thinking that you should sacrifice life to appease God. That's what mm-hmm. we have thought. Mm-hmm. Even, mm-hmm. even in a Catholic church, mm-hmm. it's the Christian message. Mm-hmm. Jesus gave his life, etc., etc., etc. And here it says it. Um, uh, instead, offer to God and you his blameless son. That's yeah. That was interpreted as sacrifice. And all it, all it means is by offering God his son, it's to look at the guy across the street that I have a beef with and drop the beef with yes. the help of the Holy Spirit. That's right. what the sacrifice is. Yeah, that's the only sacrifice, is to let go of my judgment. That's the sacrifice. I it's mean, it's like, so elegant. My, it's my so self-righteousness it's, is going to keep me away from loving anything. My self-righteousness will, will put up that wall. But you see how the nightmare of what we have done, whether it's a... Hello to more sacrifices, Mayan temple sacrifice, blood, mm-hmm. whatever it is that we have done in the name of storming the gates of heaven. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there is, there is a glimmer of it that's beautiful and loving in the mind of God, and it's here. Right. Offer me, offer me my own son. Will you please? Mm-hmm. And he's not talking about Isaac with a knife in no, him. No, he's talking about you. He's talking about me. Yeah, well, I he's am... talking about it. But I start beautifully as, as the divine agent, by the blessing of God, the help of the Holy Spirit, 
I can say, you know, I've got a gripe. It's an ancient gripe with my second grade teacher from when I was seven years old, mm -hmm. and it still gets to me. And when I think of her face, I still feel a little bit of a, <clears throat> you know, something as old and stupid as that. Right. I have an opportunity mm -hmm. to offer that son to yes. Almighty God, and right. he's happy. Right. I, and I'm happy, and I right. feel the release. And that second grade teacher or whatever blesses me from ancient days. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And in fact, it's a, it's a pretty good exercise to go through where, all, you know, just name people that you have and situations that you have gripes with and everything else. And say, Well, I got off on that track. But say, give me your blessing, Holy Son of God. <laughs> and and, and uh, decide that God is right and you were wrong about yourself. Now, the thing is, if, if God is Harvey the six-foot rabbit, then people are going to think you're nuts. Mm -hmm. In other words, you can't say, you know, God's right, don't know where he is. Don't know who he is. Don't know how he thinks. But I'm going to give him the good stuff, and I'm going to I'm going to say that I'm wrong. There has to be an understanding, and that's this whole process of these holes being pricked in this wall. This of 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 forgiving the sonship, or of of participating in this creative process mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit. That's the only way I can know that God is right. Right. And I am wrong. I can't just do it and mm -hmm. just like, oh, God's right. Like, you know, I don't yeah. know the guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how would you say? What do you think? Well, for, for some reason, this came to mind. I mean, we, we have um, this idea that it's very, very difficult and things like that. There's a, an ancient initiation or something where they put the crocodiles and everything in the Oh, tank. yeah, and you swim down and but, around. And... But if you don't know that, you know, that there's another way out. It, the out, the way out eventually, you know, it's like I can't go up because they're going to eat me. You know, you've been thrown in there, and then the, I don't know how that works. But anyway, so the only thing to do is to go down. It's the opposite of what you think you must do. In that initiation, from what you know about it, do they, they go do through, they tell them that there's an opening? Do they tell them, or they just make them say, "There's a way out. Go find it." I I think they have to I think they have to find it. They have to figure it out themselves. The the thing is, is that they don't know that the crocodiles have all been fed. Okay, so oh, is they're that not the trick? Yeah, the trick is that they're they're not hungry right now. But it's So a, how many initiates just a, made friends with crocodiles? I have no idea. <laughs> but the fear enough of like going back up through a crocodile. <laughs> a bunch of crocodiles. But the thing of it is is that the analogy is that you must go down and inward and enter into a, a very quiet space to get clear. You want to run away, and you've got to and go you've down. You've got to go into down it. and through a small opening. Then you come up in another tank. And I want to I want to run the away from the brother. There. I want to run away from the beef I have with a seventh grade teacher or anybody else. I well, want anyway, to run away. There's this, there's this going down before you come back up and see the light. It's right. it's a it's a it's like I have to do the opposite. I have to bless the thing that I hate. I have to do the opposite of what I think I need to be up to Well, I'm gonna, in, I'm, in order to see the light. But real quickly, I want to correct the analogy. I want to correct the metaphor okay. in this way, that um, that's an initiate. That's Egypt. Those yeah. are crocodiles, yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, it involves a certain amount of heroism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This has no heroism. The only the, None. Right. Zero. Zilch. Mm -hmm. The the, the 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 inaccuracy of the analogy is that it takes bravery, courage, trust in a process, blind trust. The only blind trust we have here is say, Holy Spirit, help me out of this thing. I want another way to look at this. How right. hard is that? I mm -hmm. don't have to learn to hold my breath for 15 minutes. No. But when you first start to practice it, it does seem like it no, takes you're bravery. Right. No, I know. It does, I'm seem, not... it does seem to take a certain amount of like, I got to push against the thing that I think... I'm right about the thing I'm. I think needs to be changed in order to save the world. You know, if only these people would do this thing, then, um, then we would stop hurting the planet, stop hurting each okay, other. You know, whatever I'm, those, whatever those things that I have made up in my mind that I think have to happen, then I'm not relying on the Holy Spirit. In our stuff. godless atheistic culture, society, era, in time. Mm -hmm. uh, it, what you're talking about, that diving down into the tank and past the crocodi crocodiles. Um, might just be somehow finding a place in yourself that you trust that God exists. Yeah, and that there's that's a, what it and is. And that he cares somehow. Yeah, that, so that's that, it. Yeah, 
there is that where you meditate and you see the pebble going down and then you, you follow the pebble down into the very, very quiet space so that you might get clear from your own thoughts. Anyway, um, anyway, this, this whole paragraph was a lot about remembering that God is in us. We, he hasn't left us and that he wants to offer his love to us, but so long as we want to blame something, condemn something, have grievances and everything else, we won't recognize God's love. That well, I don't want to wear it out, but even beyond that, just mm -hmm. it's a, it surprised me reading it. That's why I'm going to say mm -hmm. it again. Yeah, go ahead. Remember that there is no second. In other words, God might be in me, mm -hmm. but the thing is, it's and the I, first. I don't mean to be trite, yeah, it's the same. But I'm actually in God. Yes, yes. And I never left. Right. Exactly. That's why I can say God is in me, only because there is no second. I never left God in the first place. Right. This is a weird, paradoxical planet we're on. Yes, it is. Okay. Let's go to paragraph five. Before you make any decisions for yourself, remember that you have decided against your function in heaven, and then consider carefully whether you want to make decisions here. Your function here is to decide against deciding what you want in recognition that you do not know. How, then, can you decide what you should do? Leave all decisions to the one who speaks for God and for your function as he knows it. So will he teach you to remove the awful burden you have laid upon yourself by loving not the Son of God and trying to teach him guilt instead of love? Give up this frantic and insane attempt that cheats you of the joy of living with your God and Father and of waking gladly to his love and holiness that join together as the truth in you, making you one with him. I couldn't help. Uh, I, got an, I, I imagined that we're all on this like cross-country tour you're one of those big greyhounds. Okay. <clears throat> you know, double decker bus. Mm -hmm. And the passengers are all under the, the illusion that there's no driver. And so the, they're just freaked out of their minds. <laughs> they're watching, they're waiting for the bus to go swerving off the road. They're waiting for the thing to run into mm -hmm. that cliff. They're waiting, is it going to make that turn or not? <clears throat> you know, all that kind of stuff. And they're just going mad because they don't know that there's a guy in a suit with a little greyhound and a name tag, Dave, or whatever, yeah. and he's dri driving. And the, He's a uh, kind of a short guy, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> you can't see him from the back seat. <laughs> Could be my son-in-law very soon. <laughs> no, that's a city bus. But anyway, um, that you, you can see how freaked you would be if you thought in your, in your insanity, your craziness, that the bus was out of control and that nothing was guiding you except your own fear that mm -hmm. it was going to go off the rails, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. And, and so that, and all somebody has to do is say, no, there's a driver, but they have to convince you there's a driver. Yeah. You know, you have to go through a process mm -hmm. of recognizing I am guided. The guy's got training. Mm -hmm. We're not going to go off the road. Right. And, and, and then you, you would literally sit back in your seat and relax. And watch the landscape <laughs> go by instead of just like sweating bullets the whole time. Yeah, so that's the Holy Spirit and God. He's always there. And before you make any decisions for yourself, remember that you've decided against your function in heaven. And that all my decisions that I'm making for myself, that it there is a whole lesson that says, um, I do not know what's in my own best interests. Right. And uh, until we recognize that we really don't know what we really want, except that we would say, if we're honest, that we want to be happy. What's and my function in heaven? Your function in heaven is creating. I mean, here on earth, Where's my your, function is forgiveness. Is, is learning forgiveness, yeah. Peace is my purpose, forgiveness is my function. Isn't that one of the things? Yeah. So what is it in heaven? It's creating. You're saying it's, it's, it's extension of... God, it's extension. Yeah, your function in, in heaven is um, is always creating. And because I rejected that, extension. I'm in this fix mm -hmm. of having to do forgiveness, right, and dropping grievances as a an earthly counterpart, yeah, to the creative function in heaven. 
So then it just says, leave all decisions to one who speaks for God and for your function as he knows it. So again, our function while we're in a deluded state is to forgive, but our function in heaven is to create as God creates. And we don't know what that is, and so as the Course says, for, don't even think about it. Yeah. Because you don't understand what Mm-mm. that could possibly Mm-mm. be. And heaven seeps in, in those holy instances, and that's why extension can happen here. That's, it's like, it's what you call those pinholes, where, you know, the time and space are suspended for a second, right. and a holy instant happens. Paragraph 6, when you have learned how to decide with God, all decisions become as easy and as right, as right as breathing. There is no effort, and you will be led as gently as if you were being carried down a quiet path in summer. Only your own volition seems to make deciding hard. The Holy Spirit will not delay in answering your every question what to do. He knows. He will tell you, and then do it for you. You who are tired will find this more restful than sleep, for you can bring your guilt into sleeping, but not into this. Which the, f- the first thing I thought when I read that was, there's always this um, uh, this thing like, how come, let's say, Paramahansa Yogananda gets away with like sleeping two hours a night or something? You know, I mean, mm-hmm. that's the, the deal, that mm-hmm. they never sleep, these guys. Right. You know, or, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Shirdi Sai Baba or whatever, and they never sleep. You know, sometimes they send a nod off, but they're always awake, apparently. And this says, you who are tired will find this more restful. In other words, just letting the Holy Spirit decide, living in a world right. that by its nature, the, the friction is made up. It's not like there's no friction and I don't care. You just say, the friction is already dealt with, mm-hmm. you know. I'm supposed to be who I am Mm -hmm. to the best of my ability here, and that is a restful state. Yes, absolutely. And so you don't feel beat up maybe by the end of the day. What do you think? Absolutely. I I feel that way. And you know, the paragraph that I read before this, um, I read this a little bit um, before we got even to our preview here, and um, I almost cried on paragraph five because I realized how much I'm just deciding for myself and making my life difficult for myself. Do you remember which part? Yeah, just the whole part of just how easy it will be if I let the Holy Spirit. So he will teach you to remove the awful burden you have laid upon yourself by loving not the Son of God and trying to teach him guilt instead of love. Give up this frantic and insane attempt. So all the things where I think I want to be right, I want to I want to hold on to my decisions about things and everything else, I I don't let in the right answer. They, they, I, I've just shut the, slam the door, slam the door on the Holy Spirit to give me a different answer that would make me calm, restful, and also take the burden off of that other person experiencing what my judgments on them. You know. So it's the grim reality of the crucifixion. Yeah, I'll, I'm crucifying myself. I, in those moments, I am crucifying myself, and so. It, it made me almost cry just because it's not that hard, but it seems hard when all we've learned is that how I learn and the way the world has taught me and everything is the right way. And so if I've been taught that, you know, for an example, all the racism, that black people are bad for some reason, then um, because that's my, my mom told me or whatever, don't go over there or strangers or whatever. All those things that we're taught in the world. And I think they're right because they came from an authority figure. They came from somebody that seemed like an authority in my life. Well, until I want to retract that and say, I want to see it anew. I want to see this new. Not the way I thought it was. Not the way I learned it. Not the way I learned it. And um, so that part seems hard. But as... As you start to apply it, you recognize when you're making those judgments. And so you can you can kind of go and pull back. You can It's a very different process. It's a very, very different process. So anyway, and then uh, your paragraph was um, when you have learned how to decide with God, all decisions become easy and as right as breathing. 
And every time I see right as breathing, I think of the Matrix where she goes, you'll feel right as rain. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> she yeah. hands him the cookie. <laughs> anyway. There is no effort, and you will be led as gently as if you were being carried down a quiet path. Yeah. I, 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 it's These almost we like have you to can't take remember. On, we have to take this on faith. Yeah. I wish not, but you know, I mean, you yeah. got to learn that this ease, and is not just possible. by faith, because really, the course is experiential, and so when it's applied, you will begin to see that things go easier. Well, like the bus, if I'm upset about what's going on with the direction of the bus, I'm freaked, and mm-hmm. if I just have the simple knowledge, the simple trust that some character is actually driving this thing, mm-hmm. yeah, it, it changes, right. Um, I'm going to go on to paragraph seven. Unless you are guiltless, you cannot know God, whose will is that you know him. Therefore, you must be guiltless. Yet if you do not accept the necessary conditions for knowing him, you have denied him and do not recognize him, though he is all around you. He cannot be known without his son, whose guiltlessness is the condition for knowing him. Accepting his son as guilty is denial of the father so complete that knowledge is swept away from recognition in the very mind where God himself has placed it. If you would but listen and learn how impossible this is, do not endow him with attributes you understand. You made him not, and anything you understand is not of him. Now, whenever I hear the word condition... I think of the condition is, as it said in one of the other lessons, um, to to bless, to actually offer a blessing. Mm -hmm. And that offer of blessing is a spontaneous extension. I don't have to say, I decide, bless you, Mm -hmm. Joy and I bless you. It's not like that. It leaps out of me as a spontaneous, weird sense of gratitude for Uh the fact that that guy, that situation, that circumstance isn't the shit show that I thought it was. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Is this the, is this the only way to God? And, and, you know, I'm, I'm, it comes up for me because I, you know, I did, you know, some yoga sort of kind of, and I've done some, some practices of this kind and that there's like many paths up the mountain. Mm -hmm. And as I do this, I'm going, well, I don't know if there, it seems to me, I'm thinking to myself, maybe there isn't another way. That one way or another, this is the gate. This right. is the gate, the sonship, the, the the forgiveness, the being right with the world or letting the world be right with me mm-hmm. at a deep, soulful mm-hmm. level. Mm-hmm. One way or another. Is, what well, do you think? Um, I'm not really sure. What I do know is that the Course came and was sent into the Western world Yeah. Okay. for Western, Western thinking, yeah. which we're less mindful we are very external in our expressions. And so there's not a lot in our culture to teach us to go quiet and to listen. And actually, maybe now in this world, all over because of flat screens all over the place, there's a constant bombardment to the mind that perhaps it's as cluttered everywhere as it ever was. But... Um, it's specifically written in English. It's specifically written for the Western world because um, it just seems like we don't we don't do things in such a manner that is um, mindful. Or well, we don't have very many options. No, I mean we're busy, 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 busy. You know, and and you know once both parents are working, it's like it gets more and more busy. You know, they're hauling kids back and forth everywhere and. You know, there's a constant barrage of stuff. And when you finally feel like you want to relax, what do you do? You turn on the tube. I mean, you turn you turn on your device. And that seems to be relaxing. So uh, you're workbook. asking whether or not this is the only way um, is to learn um, my guiltlessness and to learn... Yeah, through to, the sonship, through, through, through the the forgiveness, sonship. through the uh, uh, dropping grievances. Well, I think it's the most succinct. For me, it's the most succinct method that I have ever read. I can read the Bible. I can try to understand what Jesus was telling his disciples and everything else. But it is an incomplete method. I do not know the inside stories of what they were taught by Jesus and sitting by next, next to him. I'm not next to a guru. 
this is as close to sitting next to a guru as I think that you can get. And that's like, take it, listen to it, apply the lessons, go tomorrow, go the next day, do it again, do it again, do it again. And once you keep doing it, more and more. No, that's a good point. Okay, I, I understand. Because like in an Asian context, let's say where it's India, China, mm -hmm. Asia, um, there's more of a spatial mindset. There, there's more respect or appreciation of the context of a situation. Mm -hmm. So if, if in an Asian context, they're doing um, the self-inquiry practice or they're doing a Taoist practice right. of allowing and the self-inquiry is, uh, you know, who is it that's depressed? Who is it that's happy? Who is it that's, mm -hmm. you know, who am I? Who am I? Who am mm -hmm. I? And uh, soham, soham, koham, koham, whatever. These kinds of practices actually drill and drill and drill in the cultural context. Mm -hmm. But if the con cultural context is very uh, galvanized with materials and interpretations of material well-being, uh, I would say that I think you're right, that this came, this came to uh, us at this time in yes. this place. Uh -huh. And I, it would be a whole other thing to try to figure out. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I think that um, people... Uh, attain awareness of God in Buddhism. I think they attain it in everything, anything that's mindful towards understanding because... Um, this is so direct. Jesus said, ask and it shall be given, meaning ask me. You have to invite him into your life and into the dialogue. You're supposed to have a dialogue with him, which isn't really fully emphasized in a lot of religions. It's like, read it, contemplate and stuff. No, get in a dialogue like you're talking to a friend. The same thing here. Get in a dialogue so you're talking to the Holy Spirit. You're asking, you're like saying, hey, I'm going to go out. I'm going to take the Holy Spirit with me, you know, <laughs> whatever, you know. Well, I never understood it until going through this course this time. The clarity of that I actually might as well have a little pilot light on myself that means forgiveness is up, Contact with the Holy Spirit is up, yeah. and that's any time I'm upset. Mm -hmm. Any time you're upset. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I stub my toe and I'm upset. Yeah. There's a drippy faucet, I'm upset. You know, I don't really like what's happening politically. I don't like something, like I was, was ranting and raving about some stuff. I don't even know what it was, some theological detail with Catholicism. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And um, as soon as I get jacked, mm -hmm. I can say, whoops, you know, there's my pilot light. It's saying... Yeah. Forgive, find the sonship, find yeah. it, give it, all, yeah. you know, give that to God. Yeah. That's what's being asked for here. That's a, that's Not for me to work out the theological detail mm -hmm. in Catholicism. Yeah, exactly. Eight. Is that good? Can yes. we go on? Yeah. Your, ta your task is not to make reality. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. It is here without your making but not without you, you who have tried to throw yourself away and valued God so little. Hear me speak for him and for yourself. You cannot understand how much your father loves you, for there is no parallel in your experience of the world to help you understand it. There is nothing on earth with which it can compare, and nothing you have ever felt apart from him resembles it ever so faintly. You cannot even give a blessing in perfect gentleness. Would you know of one who gives forever and who knows of nothing except giving? Right. Now, the thing is, what's interesting about that is, in a sense, correct me if this sounds fishy, mm -hmm. I am the giving of God. And you say, well, you're, what do you think you are? God's gift to the world. God has an extension. Yeah, he gave. It's this. It's He gave us. his only begotten it's son, me. which is actually the sonship. The All extension of is fingers. this. <laughs> and so, I, in a way, the giving is diluted. That's me, the, the extension of God as the sonship, the extension to the son, because there's the love between the father and the son. Yes. Holy Spirit is, is mediator. Um, the son is lost it, at this point. It, it, there's a, there's an, uh, an eddy in its mind that it, it doesn't understand. It's hallucinating. Mm -hmm. And um, and I can't understand that kind of 
giving or that kind of generosity or that kind of creativity because I'm, I'm in it. Mm-hmm. I'm in it. I mean, it's like I, I would have to, in other words, I heard some guy say, to know God is to be God. Yeah. So yeah. as long as I have a sense of being separate in any way, mm-hmm. and as long as there's any sense of conditionality on me and the creative outpouring mm-hmm. that is reality with a capital R, yeah. as long as there's any conditionality on that, um, I'm... Uh, degrees different than what would be the great sense of God's giving, God's love, God's mm-hmm. anything. I can't experience any of that stuff. Right. And it's it is a it's a process only from the process of undoing. It's like taking off layers and layers of you know, paper mache or whatever you want to call it that you've created around you that says I'm all my, I'm all in my own little world here and I'm re- and uh I'm projecting my uh, screen of my thoughts on the inside of that ball that I'm inside of. It says your task is not to make reality. It's already here. Yeah, that's right. It's but, already here, and you're do. in it. We make it all the time. We make reality. So you use the word make. Your task yeah. is not to make reality. Right. Because reality, with the big R, is created, and there's only one thing that's real, and that's God. Right, and if and if God is there, then then love is the uh, the latent inherent condition of things. Whether I understand what that word means, love, it's worth discussing what the mm-hmm. word means. I'm not going to do it here, but to to understand love mm-hmm. as something I can't understand, right? Um, and to recognize that that's what all of this is. Uh, and, and until the Course I says decide, it, can't, it can't tell us what love is. It and only, I can't do it. Yeah, it has to be removing the blocks to love. That's I can't what it do is. love. I, I, yeah, I mean, I can, mm-hmm. I can go through these exercises mm-hmm. or whatever, mm-hmm. but God is love. And so that all I can do is participate with that creative impulse of my proper place. Yeah. Then I become love. I'm in love. You know, I'm, yes. love is there. And then I would understand love in a sense. Yeah. Is that... Yeah, yeah. Um, Paragraph 9. The children of heaven live in the light of the blessing of their Father because they know that they are sinless. The atonement was established as the means of restoring guiltlessness to the minds that have denied it and thus denied heaven to themselves. Atonement teaches you the true condition of the Son of God. It does not teach you what you are or what your father is. The Holy Spirit, who who remembers this for you, merely teaches you how to remove the blocks that stand between you and what you know. His memory is yours. If you remember what you have made, you are remembering nothing. Remembrance of reality is in him and therefore in you. So I had that, you know, that, thing about the Star Trek episode and um, the only thing they can do is talk these people back to the mothership they can't they can't really describe said oh when you get here it's gonna be great you're gonna have your own bunk you're gonna you you know we got food whatever we got this thing or there's some great (laughs) people you're gonna want to meet none of that's relevant Mm -hmm. the only thing that's relevant is these are the steps that are required of these people who are hallucinating to get back right. to reality. There are these steps, and they're fairly clear, I think. Yeah, they are clear. But nothing else matters to us because we can't really understand anything else. No. It says that you cannot, um, what was it? it it's, it's to teach you how to remove the blocks that stand between you and what you know. And again, the blocks are to love. And so to experience love in the fullness of what they described earlier, of the completeness of the love of God, I don't know if I had it completely without any form of ideas of separation. I think, what do you do? What's that called? Emulate? You know, you yeah, emulate. Like, yeah. Emulate. Well, I'd say that you would have to say you that just that go, would be the case. You know, you just become light yourself and you just vanish because um, it, takes, it takes a contact with this world and the world that allows me to be here and to still have remembrance of the truth of what I am. Well, I thought this was remarkable. Atonement teaches you the true condition of the Son of God. 
It does not teach you what you are or what your Father is. The Holy Spirit, who remembers this for you, merely teaches you how to remove the blocks that yeah. stand between you and what you know. So the issue here isn't to really come to any knowledge. It, the, the issue is to get the hell out of here. Yeah, I mean, it's to, to get the illusion behind us or to be aware of the illusion Right. Aspect. And every time we do something contrary to what we uh, would normally, uh, you know, that's evil. That we need to do something about the evil over there. Or, you know, whatever we judge and things like that. Once we turn those decisions over to the Holy Spirit, it begins to bring back the remembrance of what I layer really am. upon layer of fixing this place. Not only has it never worked, worked. it has never worked. It, 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 it attracts bad players mm -hmm. because it's it's always taken over, co-opted. The only way that's possible is for me to deal with what I got control over, which is not in some foundation in some third world mm -hmm. country or in some other place on the planet or even in my own neighborhood. Yeah. My own real estate, you know, is like here mm -hmm. and that or here, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that this is what I have and yeah. this is what has the possibility and of that release. Being, that being said, it doesn't mean that once the Holy Spirit starts working through me and everything else that acts of charity are or may come spontaneously to various things because love extending into the world is necessary for the world to be healed, for all my brothers and sisters to be healed. And so whatever reduces fear in the world is going to help bring the remembrance of love back. As soon as I start plotting for a way to fix anything yeah, here, I, or even not, to bring yeah, any, any, a plot to bring relief, Mm -hmm. A plot within me to extend love. All these plots, these strategies. It says here, when you have learned how to decide with God, paragraph 6, first line, all decisions become as easy and as right as breathing. Right. Mm -hmm. So as soon as I start plotting any, yeah, no, no matter how beautiful and how altruistic it is, mm -hmm. it's suspect unless I'm working in this partnership yeah unless you're working in the partnership and that's the key so and then you know, somebody's going to come in there and say so you're where, supposed to be lazy and yeah, you're going where's the world, the information right? coming from and how do you um again this the whole thing is to get used to working with the holy spirit so that you can recognize when those uh inspirations and things are really coming not from my big idea of how to fix something but it's coming from someplace else well, just for a second, you, you do more of this than I do. I'm not worried about it myself. But what would you say to somebody that says, "Hey, Joanna, man, the soup kitchen. You're going to make the world a better place." What you know, given what we're talking about, what what do you do? Well, the thing of it is, is if someone said, you know, we need extra people at the soup kitchen, and are are you available to help? Usually, I would say yes. And the thing of it is, though. Um, that's the opportunity if it's not like imminent that i need to make the decision right there that's the opportunity to say holy spirit is this the best place for me to use my my time my ta my talents and my treasure what what is up for me is this the best place and if it says yes go through this process and you won't understand what it's up to. It's not really about serving the food. It's about something else. I won't know. What? Just continue with that so, a little bit. It's so not about serving the it's, food. It's, Maybe. What would it be? Community? Maybe, you, were, you were reached out to by a brother that's making an unreasonable? I'm putting uh, quotes on it. Yeah, an unreasonable request. Maybe in my book. You know, it's like, I've already volunteered for all this other stuff. You know, I don't really want to add to my, my calendar. Um, well, then, I a lot of times what happens is... Because the Holy Spirit works with the now moment, if I'm being asked to go and, and, I, and I hear the, the Holy Spirit says, yes, please help them. It's, it's, it's a good thing. Usually under those circumstances, I'm just going to say from my own experience, there is another layer of understanding that comes from the act of giving food to somebody. Something about maybe it's the person who asked me to do it. I had judgments with them. I find out something more about them, and I find out I've been wrong. There's other things that come into the picture. Or in my case, I would be... For a healing right. of my ideas about something. So there's a potential for the Holy Spirit to work in a healing because you said yes to a thing and yes. didn't 
think that you were going to save the world by making sandwiches or whatever? No, it's not about saving the world. It's about recognizing um, the the brother who is me in every instance. So I would then, and I'll tell you what, I don't really want to take any of my advice here. I have no intention of walking this talk at this point. <laughs> okay. But I have resistance to these things. Right. I don't want to go to the soup kitchen. Mm -hmm. I don't want to make sandwiches for people. There's, you know, I, I've always resisted the busy work of doing good deeds because I've the times when I did do it or did participate, it seemed fruitless, feckless, useless. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm conditioned against it. So obviously I've got a wound here. Yeah. Uh -huh. And, and it, there's a resistance. So I, I don't know what to say. I, like I said, I have no intention of walking the talk. The next but, time somebody asks, you say, let me think about it. Yeah, let me think about yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, and you, you enter into another space and you say, is this what I should be up to? I don't understand. Why are they asking me, you know? <clears throat> the guiltless and the guilty are totally incapable of understanding one another. Each perceives the other as like himself, making both unable to communicate because each sees the other unlike the way he sees himself. God can communicate only to the Holy Spirit in your mind because only he shares the knowledge of what you are with God. And only the Holy Spirit can answer God for you, for only he knows what God is. Everything else that you have placed within your mind cannot exist, for what is not in communication with the mind of God has never been. Communication with God is life. Nothing without it is at all. There you go. Communication so, with God is life. So the guiltless, <laughs> the guiltless and the guilty can't understand one another. In other words, for me to go out and grab somebody by the lapels and say, come on, let's get to reality, it's a misuse of energy. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm interacting with my own hallucination, mm -hmm. and there's no understanding that can happen there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And each perceives the other as like himself, meaning the guiltless Unlike sees... Unlike himself. Yeah, uh, yeah. Each perceives the other like himself. Oh, he does. Okay. Wait. Yeah, making both unable to communicate, because if I'm guiltless, then I only see the guiltless. If I'm guilty, then I only see the guilty. That's how I read that. Oh, okay. No, no, no. That's right. That's right. So, um, so if I if I perceive guiltiness in someone else, then I perceive guiltiness in myself. But if I want to, if I take on the mantle of guiltlessness, and I then I extend that because the guiltlessness is in my brother as well. Okay. So I and you, until that happens, the communication will not happen. And I'm, in fact, there's never. There's never communication between the guilty and the guilty because they are in the false world, the, uh, an idea that is not true about themselves. The guiltless will recognize their guiltlessness, and they'll recognize each other as brothers. So what ends up happening is there's a situation. I've talked about it before with this guy. It was a neighbor named Tony, and um, a guy I don't want to talk to. I don't like the way Tony is. I don't like anything about him. But that I went through, you know... Um, the, well, you say that it's not true anymore. No, I know, no, I know. I'm just, I'm trying to make a point. Yeah, it's okay. not like Tony and I are going to go fishing, or ever no, did, or ever would, or could. No, I, I understand. You know, that. so my point being that there's a, a a real oil and water in in the relative world situation mm -hmm. there that is always there. Mm -hmm. It's not going to go away. The right. oil and water. Mm -hmm. I would irritate Tony with being verbose, me being verbose, and Tony irritates me by not being verbose. You know yeah, what I mean? So, right. so we're going to irritate one another. However, we can love each other in this context of forgiveness. And um, the way it functions is there's a, a strange undercurrent of allowing the other person to be whatever the hell they are. Yes. Leaving them alone mm -hmm. and not expecting me, in my case, not expecting that now I'm going to bring over, you know, war and peace and talk to Tony about it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not what we're going to do. And he feels the same way about me. Mm -hmm. he, he understands my difference. He understands, mm -hmm. wow, that Phil guy over there, he's a pretty weird guy, but I like him. Okay. Yeah. He's a mm -hmm. weird guy, but I like mm -hmm. him. And I'm going to have the same feeling about Tony. Mm hmm. So in that context, we have our peace, we have our forgiveness, 
Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And I, I guess there is a cautionary tale about, you know, just letting whatever come into your life. I mean, there is discernment um, about, you know, I'm not just suddenly going to hang out with a bunch of drug addicts just to find out if I can be a brother with them. That's not the, that's not the point. No, but, but you do have a, what I have grown fond of calling a cell, C-E-L-L, of experience, mm-hmm. where I am trapped in the elevator. I am asked to do the soup kitchen. I yeah. do have an interaction with a neighbor named Yeah, Tony. it's what's in front of you. That's a cell of experience. Yeah. You don't, I don't have to go seeking them out. No, they you don't happen seek them out. spontaneously. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And if, if it does so happen that eight people from a drug cartel come to my front door, maybe I go in the basement until they go away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's not necessarily the, you know, you'd have to listen to the voice of God and say, yeah, just go out the back door. <laughs> Heal it's the fine. world, Phil. Heal the world. But pray for them as they leave, <laughs> you know. So is that... Is that there... That's... Uh... God can communicate only to the Holy Spirit in your mind. Yeah. Because only He shares the knowledge of what you are with God. So, again, I want to reinforce again and again and again, there's this relationship. Mm-hmm. It's not the heroic effort that I have or you have or anybody no, has. No, no, it's, it's the Holy Spirit working through me, and we will be guided as we go through the process of learning to give up our preconceived ideas of things. Right. Okay. Good enough? Good enough. Thank you. Thank you.